so excited to learn more about the fire and rescue history. Me too, I mean, it's going to be so cool just to find everything out. Hey guys, what are you talking about? Hey Kelsey. Kelsey. We were just talking about the Personal Fire and Rescue Company. That's so cool, what about it? Yeah, well, Percival in the early 1900s had several large fires, so they got two hand-drawn chemical wagons, and they really didn't have a fire rescue company yet. Mm -hmm. the, the company 14, the rescue site, was founded in 1969, and at that point, the ambulance was really small. It looked like a normal car, ignoring the fact that it's sirens, like it's an ambulance on the side. Wow, that's so cool. That's been really hard. Yeah, it, it definitely was. We're, we're, we should be all thankful that they didn't stop saving lives, so. Well, I have to go. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, so I was researching and I found out about the vehicles that the fire and rescue company is now. Really? What are they? Well, they have a tanker, an engine, a rescue engine, a tower ladder, and a team. Wow. Speaking of the fire and rescue company, they didn't add women until recently. And there must have been some really great women. Yeah, did you know that they removed the fire pole? Well, there were too many injuries due to it. People kept falling down a hole, falling on top of each other, and sliding down too fast. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine being woken up in the middle of the night and then trying to slide down a fire pole? That's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, I heard that the fire stations are really well, but let's just be honest. Yeah, they cannot function without one another. In the EMT, they're at a crash site. What are they supposed to do if they can't get the person out of the car? And the firefighters, if they're in a fire, where are they supposed to be injured people?